Welcome back, everybody. My name is Randy. Of course, you're watching the 5 5 Garage, and today is another episode in my Turbo Miata build project. We'll be working on the cylinder head. So, if this is the first time you're watching a video on this channel, especially in this series, somewhere around in here will be a link to the Turbo Miata build playlist, so it will get you up to speed on everything that has been done. But for those of you who have been following this build series from day one, today we will be working on the cylinder head, but there is going to be a couple of different little changes from what I had previously set out to do. If you have been following my Instagram, my Facebook, even my Patreon, you will know that I am not going to use the cylinder head that was originally on my engine. There's nothing wrong with it. It is perfectly fine. The reason why I'm making a switch is I was able to get a complete intake setup from a 99 Miata. And what that means is I will not be using the BP05 head, but I will be using the updated BP4W. The difference is there, just to put it easily, is that Mazda revised the cylinder head in 1999. And one of the things that they did was they actually raised the intake ports and that uh, makes a much straighter path to go into the combustion chamber than what was previously on the other cylinder head. The advantages are increased airflow helps to inc make increased power, and that's one of the reasons why I did it. As well, there are some other reasons that I made this change, but I won't get into those now. That was for a later video, so you might wanna stay tuned for that one. But as well, I was able to get the intake manifold, so I won't have to do any kind of weird shenanigans trying to get the NA intake manifold to fit onto the MB head. So all of this is just going to bolt right up. It's going to make it so much easier. It does make my engine build a little bit more of a Frankenstein process because now I have the cylinder head from the MB and the intake manifold from the MB, but I have the engine block from the NA. But thankfully, all those parts are pretty much interchangeable. There are some wiring changes you will have to do. We will get to that later on. But for today, I am finally to the point where I am ready to put the cylinder head onto my engine block. I have already cleaned it. I have already added new valve sim seals. I've already cleaned the valves, cleaned combustion chambers. Everything is ready to go to be put onto the engine. But there are a couple pieces I want to add now before I put them on the engine just because it makes the installation process easier. So let's just get to that. Here we are. First thing we're going to work on is this front uh, water outlet. Now, normally this is your thermostat housing. It fits here like so, and then your thermostat is in here. And then you have the water outlet that goes to your radiator. My car will be running a coolant reroute, so I have to make some little changes to this. Um, first thing I did was remove the studs that's on here because I'm going to end up running a block off plate that looks like this and then I will keep these as these will be the water feeds for my turbo. This is the back of the cylinder head and normally you would have uh, a different piece that goes on the back of here. I will be running a coolant reroute. I got a cobalt coolant reroute for free when I bought my turbo parts earlier. So I'm just gonna be using that. And part of that kit is this piece will go and fit on the back like here. This is where your factory water temp sensor will go. This is where the coolant hose port will be. And then there is another one down here in case you wanna run another water temperature sensor. Maybe you wanna run one to an external gauge. And then your thermostat fits in there. And then your coolant outlet goes like this. And then there's a hose that wraps around the side and goes to the front of the engine. One thing of note is that when you go to install your coolant reroute, if you're going to install a coolant reroute, is see this little 
lead hole right here, that needs to be facing up towards the factory coolant sensor. So it'll be in there like so, and then you start putting this together. Now this kit came with pretty much everything you need to put it together. These are the bolts that go back here. This is the plug for that lower port that is right here. You have your barb fitting that goes to your coolant hoses. And then of course, I just went and got another uh, factory water temperature sensor. And I have uh, some extra gaskets as well. And also when I go to put all this together, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this anti seize just in case, because I wanna make sure that one, these bolts will be easier to take out if for every reason I need to take this back apart. As well, I think I'm going to use a little bit extra of this Permatex Bright Stuff Gasket Maker. This stuff is awesome. This is pretty much going to be what I use anytime I need to have a gasket maker from now on. This stuff is great. When I'm adding in uh, these barb fittings and the sensor and this plug, I'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, high temperature thread sealant just because I want everything to be sealed up back here, nice and tight. I don't want any leaks on the back of the engine. Here we are back at the engine block and the next thing I want to install on this before I put the cylinder head on is a set of ARP head studs. I already have ARP studs for my mains but I want to use a set of these for my cylinder head as well and when you go to install these you're going to want to use the ARP lubricant on the studs going into the block as well as the washers and the nuts. Here is an ARP head stud and the way you tell the difference between the one that needs to go in the block and the one that you will be bolted to is the end that goes into the block is solid and the end that you will be bolting to has this little allen head recess in it. Now ARP recommends that you install these hand tight in what you want to do is screw them in by hand until they bottom out. Now, I like to use an uh, Allen head wrench just to help me ensure that they bottom out, but I'm not tightening them down. It's just finger tight. Now that we have all of our headsets installed, the next thing we need to do is install the head gasket. And all I did was just get an OEM Mazda MLS gasket. And for those of you who may not know, MLS stands for multiple layered steel. And you can kind of see, without pulling this part too far, there are different layers in here that when compressed makes a good sealing gasket. Now, when you put this on, there is something that you need to be aware of. See these two holes right here? They need to match up to these two holes right here in the engine block. Because if you put this on backwards, would be those two water holes would be covered up and then you're gonna give yourself a serious cooling issue. So, once you get this on, you just wanna make sure and look and make sure that all of these holes, nothing is blocked. Everything is open and looking good, so I got this going the right way. Next step is I can go ahead and set the head down onto the block. We're going to want to drop these ARP supplied washers on top of the studs and make sure you lubricate them on both sides. Pretty much the threads of the studs, the washers, and the nuts all have to be lubricated. When you get ARP head studs, it comes with a sheet which gives you all of your specs as well as shows you the torque sequence 
when you go to torque this down. Now, this tells me that I need to torque these down to 65 foot-pounds in three stages. So I think I'm gonna go 22, 44, then 65. I will have a graphic in the video somewhere, but this is the bolt torque sequence that you need to follow when tightening down the cylinder head. ARP uses 12 point bolts. You will need to go get a set of 12 point sockets in order to torque these down. Six points will round these off. Definitely go get a set of 12 point sockets. Now, that's all torqued down to 65 foot-pounds. Okay, so this is where I messed up. Um, I didn't realize that my microphone and my camera was off, but basically I am installing the thermostat housing with an O-ring and I used some of the Rice Stuff sealer just to make sure I wasn't gonna have any leaks. And then I got the bolts finger tight and then I used a wrench and got them snug. You really don't need to torque it down too tight. Remember, it's uh, going into an aluminum block. And then I use more of the sealer for the front block off plate, and then got that all nice and snug, and that's it. Before we wrap this up, allow me to apologize for the previous set of clips. I took a break to get something to eat, so when I came back and started recording, I forgot to check to see if the microphone was on, but I will go back and add some annotations just to let you guys know what was going on in that clip. It's a fairly straightforward process of putting that thermostat housing back on there and sealing it up. So I will go back and make sure that I add some notes and things so you guys can understand what's going on there. But other than my mistake, <laughs> this is a wrap. So I got the cylinder head on now. It's all torqued down, it's ready to go. I got my coolant reroute all set up, it's ready to go. I believe in the next video, I think I'm gonna go ahead and install the trigger wheel with the harmonic balancer and the crank trigger sensor so I can then add the camshafts and begin the process of timing this engine so I can get it ready to put back into the car. So those are a couple of videos that you guys can look forward to. And if you are liking this content and you're liking the videos and you like the channel, please make sure, please, please, please make sure that you click like. I can't tell you guys how important it is to the YouTube algorithm that you click like on the videos because it boosts me in the algorithm as well. It makes it where people can find my channel and my content. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so when these videos come out, you know exactly when that happens. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and on Patreon. A lot of times when I'm out here in the garage, I don't have a camera with me. I'm doing small little tasks that I don't think will make a very good video or it might not be make a video that is long enough for me to put onto my YouTube channel, but I will upload little tidbits to Instagram and Facebook. And on my Patreon, there are a couple of little instructional videos that I have done that I don't think would fit very well onto the main channel. So I throw them up there. There's also a couple of reviews that I have done and differences between cylinder heads for this project. So make sure you guys go check that out as well. So right now, uh, I need to sit down and figure out exactly what video I'm going to make next. So I'm going to go ahead and get, to, and get started on that. But I hope you guys are enjoying the nice weather wherever you are. And if it's not nice weather, please, please, please take care and be safe. Other than that, I have no idea what I'm going to say next. So I'm just going to end it here and I will see you guys on the next one.